Welcome to my channel where I chat about my science job hunt, deliver presentations and improve on my communication skills. I'm Paul Yateman, a microbiologist of 15 years seeking a return to the lab. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. Today I will talk about addressing the concerns of not enough recent relevant experience. Following one interview I thought went really well, supposedly with good rapport and I didn't come across as an idiot, the role went to someone with relevant recent experience. This was four years after my redundancy. So what did I do about it? I started up a microbiology blog, I began to provide advice in places such as LinkedIn and I started this channel most recently. Uh, so not all of once obviously, but over time. With the roles I tend to apply for, I need to stay up to date with the following. USP regulations, PICS guidelines, TGA guidelines, international standards, industry trends, communicating ideas, troubleshooting and problem solving, writing, and whatever else links into those. Short of setting up my own lab, <laughs> which I think I'll only be able to do if I win test loader and then buy one, I cannot stay on top of practical skills. But in my experience, they are like riding a bike. Once you learn them, they're with you forever. Besides, before anyone is allowed to do anything in a lab, what's the most important thing? Training them. And then they need to be certified as well. And once they're certified, off they go. What I need to stay up to date with can be chunked into two things, regulations and guidelines and communication. I regularly visit the websites of the regulators such as the FDA and the USP and the TGA and the EU and CDC and PICS and whatever else I feel is relevant uh, to see what is in draft. Uh, draft regulations is very handy because the actual document is released for comment so you can see everything in the draft and quite often the final approved document is 95 to 99% similarity to the actual draft document. So it's a great way to get your hands on the regulations rather than shelling out for the official documents if you don't have that sort of money. So draft regulations, standards and guidelines are freely available for comment and tend to change little between the draft and the published version, which is that's what I said. Here I assess the drafts against existing documents uh, this keeps my knowledge fresh and also allows me to determine what the current thinking is. Sometimes whole sections will be removed or added and to address like current concerns. So I suspect after this COVID-19 uh, situation there might be uh, say new additions to whatever documents would deal with say quarantining and travel in the event of potential pandemics. Uh, like most things, prevention is better than cure. What we're seeing at the moment is what you would call in say a production environment quality control something's gone wrong mediation action is put into place to reduce the current situation and eventually alleviate it whereas with quality assurance uh, what would have happened is immediately that there was any hint of a potential pandemic coming out of china borders would have been closed that would have been it that way the infection gets retained in China, it infects whoever it infects, and eventually it dies out. None of the planet would have been infected besides China. Uh, you will see in the news that the majority of cases, <coughs> excuse me, come from individuals that have come from overseas. How do you prevent that? Stop travel. Initially, that was, oh, we can't do that because it'll hurt the economy. Well, what's happened? The economy is stuffed anyway. So, QA, stop it before it happens. That saves you a hell of a lot of headache in the future. But anyway, getting back to relevant recent experience and not ranting about bad quarantine practices. By following discussion groups and also providing advice, I stay up to date with today's knowledge and also improve my communication. Uh, this also improves my visibility, which increases the chance that I could be approached by a potential employer about an opening or even someone to collaborate. 
To improve my communication, I rewrite recipes and software help pages in an, an imperative style. I publish blog articles, trying to keep that in plain language and hopefully not waffle on too much. And I also write more detailed advice articles. I practice giving presentations, of which this format is important, and I provide advice to others. By being aware of the current state of regulations, providing advice, and by communicating industry knowledge through mediums such as this one, I improve my visibility. Even if my knowledge was rusty, being visible gives the impression that I am active in my industry and therefore I have the relevant knowledge and experience. And one important thing with pretty much anything is impressions. Half of this struggle is managing how others perceive you. By taking the actions I have, I can demonstrate that I have recent regulatory knowledge and at the very least up-to-date documentation, training and communication skills. In my next video, I will discuss my thoughts on recruiters. If you have found this video interesting or informative, consider subscribing, sharing, liking or commenting. I value all relevant feedback as positive as without a feedback loop, improving is difficult. Until next time, this has been Paul Yateman, Bachelor of Science, seeking career satisfaction. Kapla!